What's up, guys? How's it going? Uh, this time I'm answering questions from the comments. This video is from you guys. A lot of you guys in the comments. Uh, side note, if I was a better editor by this time, you would see those comments on the screen like other influencers. But uh, <laughs> since I'm working on a, on a low budget and very little time, um, a lot of you guys always ask me about different distributors. What's good? What's better than who? You know, comparing and contrasting different types of distributors that are out there. Honestly, the best thing I can tell you about finding the distributor that that fits you is to look at where all the money's going. Okay, Spotify is the number one company right now when it comes to uh music just where music is going who's listening to it where the numbers are coming from you know everybody's going to spotify and everything's being played on or through spotify in some form or fashion so when you're thinking about how to grow your audience or you know um how to get started or who to best use for your your distribution go to spotify this link will be in the description. Spotify does have their own for artists page, like I mentioned in the YouTube for artists. And that's something that you want to look into is just where the money's going. Where can you grow your audience? Where can you get your royalties? Wh who's trusted? This list is a bit old because they haven't updated their website for this page in a while. But also Spotify is working on becoming their own distributor. So more on that later, they haven't really touched on it too much they started their own beta run with a couple artists i don't know where it's gone um or if they're still trying to implement it but i know that they said it would probably ready be ready by like 2021 or or 2022 um but they are thinking about doing it themselves because you know a lot of people need somewhere to go and they're thinking about it being free so that artists new artists could upload their music to Spotify, you know, have their account and stuff like that, and people can find them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but let's get into it. So as far as the list of distributors, um, as we're going down, like I said, it is a little bit old. You will see a lot of noteworthy, you know, distributors or, or more well-known, and you will not see some well-known or some newer distributors, because like I said, this list hasn't been updated. You will not see one RPM on this list. I want to make that very clear. You will not see one RPM on this list. The reason why you will not see one RPM on this list of digital distributors is because Spotify and one RPM had a little bit of a falling out at one point in time. Um, don't know what happened with that legally. It's not that Spotify does not work with one RPM, but I do know that one RPM had a change in management not too long ago. And before that change in management, Spotify took them off of their preferred list. So I just want to put that out there. It doesn't mean 1RPM is bad. You know, a lot of things have changed with 1RPM and a lot of things are still changing. Um, but you do have options. You know, there are people that are out there, but this is just Spotify's preferred list. And, you know, even though 1RPM had a, you know, and Spotify had their differences. DistroKid is still listed here, and DistroKid is on a whole nother level of people that you should watch out for or companies that you should keep an eye on um, in a bad way. But there is another company that's on this list that's bad, and when I get to them, you know, nothing personal against DistroKid or the other company, but I just heard so many bad things about them that I just want to steer away from them as much as possible. So DistroKid being the first questionable company that's still on this list and the other one which uh, under the label distributors is the orchid the orchid i've heard many many bad things about um i've heard some a lot of good things about them but i've heard a lot of bad things about them when it comes to smaller artists like if you're an independent you know like someone can randomly claim from the orchid your music and you know if it's not protected you have to fight against them and it's a whole thing you can look it up on youtube about the orchid there are a whole bunch of, of testimonies about them being a difficult company and and stuff like that and how they're bad for independence um it's not my personal opinion it's just what i've seen through people's testimonies but yeah if you want to you know look through this list 
at any time you're more than welcome to i will post the link in the description um they do accept submissions uh so overall you know to go through this whole list would probably take me an hour i'm not doing an hour video going through every single distributor and their their you know the things that i think are good and bad about them uh there are some overall things that i look for in companies and that's what a lot of people ask me about so that's what i'm kind of going to go over as you know in a little bit as quickly as i can um one thing about distro kid they used to they used to have this whole tag up here where it was like you know keep 100 percent of your royalties and you know we'll never charge you and blah 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 there are plenty of stories out there from other artists who have had their money stolen from distro kid and you know like like thousands of dollars like one guy was even he posted his story not too long ago where they took four thousand dollars from him and it it's a long story you can look it up but um but distro kid i checked them out back when you used to be able to make a free profile and they had a lot to offer which was pretty interesting um they definitely had tons to offer someone who was new just like tunecore tunecore has a lot to offer um distro kid seemed like it was something that would be really cool something that would be really interesting but the thing that turned me off to them being a brand new artist that you know was releasing my first album for the first you know first album first release no money you know like no like hardcore money um no backing no contract or anything the thing that turned me off to them was one thing that was noted in their policy which is no longer here um uh, it used to say that um, it was twenty dollars a month for unlimited albums and songs but you had to pay yearly so if you wanted to keep your music uploaded to let's say spotify you had to pay that twenty dollars every year or they would take down your music it's and that just rubbed me the wrong way like why do i have to constantly pay you to keep my music up if I'm, I should only pay once and it should be up there and you should be just be collecting the royalties just period you know like if that music is still is still making money it should still stay up there instead of me paying you every year and that was one thing that just turned me off like yeah they do verify you know your Spotify account which my Spotify account is verified it has the blue check mark uh, they do offer some other things like um, like being able to release in certain places or being able to release in, in very limited quantities or you know having a premiered release or you know having um having your music released early as like a sample so that people can you know um what is it like pre-register for your music which i don't i don't know about that like i said they have stuff that's offered but you know when you're looking at them you don't really see anything about all their distribution partners that's the thing that that kind of just turns me off it's like okay well who are your partners where does this where does my music go you know it's not even listed it's just you know look at all the money you can make and you know keep 100 percent of your royalties if you pay us 20 dollars. and to me that's just not what i'm interested in it doesn't say anything about analytics it doesn't say anything about their partners where your music is going what countries it's going to you know what stores it's going to and so for me distro kid is a no just period uh cd baby i've talked about them before i still use them i still think they're great um they are a little bit pricey but they get they get stuff done you know you can find their list of partners on their site you can find out how things work they do tell you you know how you how you make your money how you get your royalties um you can literally look up their distribution partners you can make physical cds through them it costs a little bit more but you can make physical cds you can even make physical albums through them so like an actual record album you know to be played on a record player because record players and vinyls are still a thing and they still sell them you know like at target and other places people are still buying vinyls so if you want to have 
your song made into a vinyl CD baby is where you want to go. Like I've always thought about doing it and I think I might do it at some point. Whenever I get the money, I definitely want a vinyl to put up on the wall or something. Um, but you can make physical CDs. Um, their pricing isn't too bad. It's, it's about the same price as if, as if you were to do it yourself. Uh, like jeweled cases, if you order them from China are like a couple cents. And then if you, you know, you do the printouts of the album cover on some paper and you know, like if you were to do the whole CD yourself, to make a physical copy, it would be about the same. And I know some of you are thinking who the heck uses CDs anymore? CDs are still very popular in other countries, especially in Japan. In Japan, they love having a physical copy of what they like. And it's just, it's something that's important to them. Like you want to have a physical copy of something. Like if you, if you like it, you own it, you treasure it, you, you promote it, you show it off. You know, it's, it's like a trophy, not saying that's exactly how they think, but that's, something that they do and it and they still care about physical copies collector's editions deluxe editions um they show it in their video games and like other forms of media where they they prefer to have a physical copy over a digital because with a digital copy you know if that if that company shuts down you can never get it again you know or if something happens to where it's lost you can never get it again you know yeah it's digital but, you know, much like video games, if you buy a, vi a video game digital and say the next, you know, let's say the next console comes out, but something happens to your old console and you need it to be replaced, you may not get that digital copy back. You know, like there are a couple games that you can only get through a physical copy now. And that kind of sucks. But it's the same thing with music. So there are people who care about that. Uh, as far as like their digital partners, like I said, CD Baby keeps everything listed on their site, so you know exactly what what you're dealing with. You know they have Apple Music, iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, you know Pandora, YouTube, TikTok, all this stuff. Deezer. Um, one of the things that caught my attention was Line Music. Line Music is very big um, overseas. Uh, I'm in America, but if you're in Europe and Japan, Asia, uh, the Middle East. This is one of the big things. Line is very big overseas. So, you know, that's a big thing to look into. Sov, Sov, I've never known how to pronounce it. This is like, how, this is like um, an Indian radio station. It's pretty much their biggest one. It's where like all their Bollywood music is stuff is played. Very big uh, outlet to have very big place for your music to go. If you make music that, you know, fits that, that sound. Um, let me see, trying to think of who else United media agency. They're pretty good. NetEase is a Chinese company. Um, they work with Tencent. Uh, actually they're owned by Tencent. I should say, um, the fact that CD baby has Tencent makes them a lot more desirable. Uh, if you are unaware of what's going on in the music industry or just like just the tech industry in general, um, Tencent is one of the biggest companies in China and they're so big that they, they pretty much run China. I'm not trying, I don't want to say anything wrong, but Tencent has the authority to arrest people, to actually send out the police and arrest people in China. Uh, there was an incident where where uh, people were caught cheating in one of their games that they had purchased, and they literally had those people arrested. They found their address for cheating in a video game, had the police go out and arrest those people for cheating. That's how big Tencent is in China. So you want to have your music there. That's just my personal opinion. You know, like I said, follow where the money goes. That's, that's kind of a thing that's always been relevant. In music, you know, you're going to find your audience where the most people are listening to their music. You know, so why not? Why not go where the money is? Um, but yeah, like I said, as far as analytics, trends and stuff, everything CD Baby offers, which is why I like CD Baby. Uh, that's why I still use them because they they're very upfront. The only negative about CD Baby that I've the only negative I've ever had about them 
is just their customer support. Their customer support is strange because they have other artists that work with CD Baby answering your questions, but they're not the people who are making the decisions. So, like, let's say your album gets re- gets delayed. When you contact support, you're talking to another artist like yourself or another producer. You're not talking to someone in the company who who's going to tell you why your album got delayed. You know, that person that you contact can only guess as to why your album was delayed. And they'll be like, you know, hey, you know, was your music formatted like this? Or um, maybe you should try editing it or maybe you should try re-uploading it. You know, like they're they're giving you guesses off of their head as to why your your stuff might be delayed instead of telling you directly from the source, hey, this is why your album got delayed because, you know, blah, 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 X, Y, Z. That's the only problem I've ever had with CD Baby. All right, moving on. MU bands, never heard of them. Gonna be honest. Uh, looking at them, that's it. Okay, so I mean, right up front, they look like another distro kid. Um, I would probably dig into them a little deeper to see what's up with them because uh, they're not showing really anything. Who are their partners? Um, pricing. All right, let's look at pricing. It might be under services, but, uh, ooh. Ooh, look at this. Okay, so for a single, you're looking at $42. One to two tracks, lifetime support, keep 100% of your royalties. If I'm paying $42 to release one song, I better get back a lot of money. That That's, this is the thing that I want to say. This is how I think. I'm looking at, this looks like a generic image from CD Baby. Um, When I'm looking at prices, I'm thinking tracks versus price. If If I'm posting up one track for $42, pretty much $43, we'll say, which is a weird price point. $43 for one, for one track, 100% royalties. If that song isn't played a hundred thousand times in not even a hundred thousand, let's see, to make back forty to make back forty three dollars in royalties, um that song would at least need somewhere around twenty to thirty thousand plays on Spotify. Let's just say, let's just say Spotify only. It would need about 30 to 40,000 plays for me to get back $40. Maybe a little bit more, maybe maybe 50,000. That's kind of ridiculous to me. Just to me. That's just me saying it. For an EP, which is kind of like a mini album, $60 for 3 to 5 tracks. Uh You see what I'm saying? Like how much is it going to get played where is it going is it going to be put into a playlist like my music is has appeared in playlists so that's what's kind of interesting to me like like where is the music going you're not saying where my music is going you're not saying who your partners are um you're not saying who's who's handling my music so th- this kind of makes me sketchy about them. Like they are preferred, but at the same time, I'm not seeing I'm not seeing anything that invites me or excites me or gets me interested in their product um or in their services. Um and then for a full album up to 20 tracks, which I don't see why there would be a limitation um cuz if I wanted to release one album in as a three-part album for some strange reason like some people have done in the past, I'm limited to 20 tracks. That's kind of weird. And then you're paying like ninety dollars, pretty much. You're pretty much paying eighty five dollars. Um, that to me just sounds pretty strange. Um, I don't know. Let me see services. Let me see. I still don't see any of their partners. This is something that that just that just troubles me. And then some part, some distributors only do like the big three, which is like Spotify, Apple, 
and Amazon, and they'll only release to those. And it's like for anything else, you're on your own, which I'm, I do not like that either. I swear I've seen these images before. I, I'm pretty sure I've seen these images before. Um, yeah, still no list of partners. You can't even click on this. Um, they mostly talk about Spotify, customer support, 2005. I would not, I personally would not work with them. Um, and this is just me from what I look for. Like I said, I look for, you know, how much, how much is is this going to cost? I don't have the money to pay for their services for their pricing services. So if I don't have the money to pay these prices, then no, as a, as a new person, no, I wouldn't do it. And I don't know who their list of partners are. Um, so no, for me, this would be a no. And that's just where I would leave it. It would just be a no. All right, moving on. Uh, let's see record union. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They did get the Spotify preferred. Okay. Yeah. Spotify for artists. That's good. That they at least bring that up that they, that they work with you. Bam. Look at this partners. That's what I want to see right there. They should be telling me where my music is going. Um, and constantly adding more services. Okay. So let me see here. When did they, when did they, they're 2008. Okay. And they have a tab for their distribution, which I'm going to click on in a second. But at least you get to see who they're working with. Yeah. Juno Download. That one's new to me. I haven't heard of that one. Facebook is kind of weird because Facebook doesn't like instrumental music. So uh, for my genre, that's not going to help me. I don't really see anything here that would help me personally uh, out of their distributors. Um, and that's just because of the fact that their distributors mm, are more for people who make music with, with, uh, <laughs> with vocals. <laughs> I don't know why I forgot the word vocals. Uh, let's see their digital distribution. I'm gonna click on pricing next. Um, let's see. Okay, that is their list. It doesn't get any bigger than that. Okay, all right. Well, they're looking good so far. So far, um, I'm definitely liking what I see. Didn't I see her on DistroKid? Uh, actually, let me check that. Didn't I see her in DistroKid? Mm, that picture looks familiar. Mm, no, okay. No, I did not. But let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So pricing. All right. Okay. This is manageable. This looks very manageable. Um, I'm curious about the world domination. Uh, like, what is this? Um, uh, all digital music services. Okay. So for a single $15, very doable, very, very doable. Um, even here, $7, like, I don't know what top dog is about for leading services. Okay. So I'm guessing with build your own, it's kind of like pick where you want your music to go. Like if you want to go to specific stores and not all the stores. So looking at their max, which would be going to everyone. This is very good. This is affordable. I can spend $15 to release a single. Can I get that $15 back possibly in three months? Yes, I can. That is possible. Uh, as a brand, brand new artist. Um, uh, as a brand, brand new artist, maybe, maybe not, but, but you can definitely do it within a year. I wouldn't say, you know, I'm not saying, you know, in a year you're going to get back $15. It's possible. You know, if you, if you know your, your audience, if you're, your, if you know your genre, which I always preach, know your genre, um, and you know, your sound, you can possibly get that back 
$25 for an entire album, 12 tracks maximum, which is about standard. You know, most most albums nowadays are about somewhere between 11 to 17 tracks. So 12 tracks maximum for an album, not bad. $25, not bad. I definitely give them a plus. Um, this company I would definitely work with. Like if I was new starting out, I would definitely work with them. Uh, they hit a lot of good points. TikTok is, you know, hot right now. So, you know, like I said, follow where the money goes. Um, Instagram is still good. You know, using your own music on your own Instagram stories would be a good thing to do. Uh, let's see. Napster, uh, Amazon Music, of course, Spotify, of course, because they're on the preferred list. Um, Google Play. Yeah. These are entitled. Like I said, depends on, on your music. If I was doing vocals, like if I was rapping or singing or doing something with vocals, I would definitely go with Record Union. They would definitely get my approval as far as a company to go to. But um, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, look at what what they offer. You know, let's see what art what artist opportunities is about. But um, definitely look at what they do. She looks familiar. Uh, look at what they do and what they what they what they provide. And if they don't show you your part, their partners, to me that's a red flag, just straight off the bat. Like, if they don't show you where your music is going, that's a problem because you want to know where it's going. You want to know who to look up. You want to know who to who to go to when your music gets there, and make sure it's there. You know, so that way you can check it out, make sure it works, make sure it sounds right. Um, you know, I think that's good. I think this company is good. They definitely get my stamp of approval. Um, but that's something, that's something to look into. Like I said, there are more companies here, but I'm not trying to make this an hour. It's already almost 30 minutes. Uh, Cause I spent most of the time talking about CD baby. Uh, but go through all these lists, read about them, you know, look them up on YouTube, look up videos, look up, you know, post about them on Reddit or in forums and see if they're, if they work for you. You know, like I said, out of, out of the four that I looked at only two of them, <laughs> I gave, in my opinion, a stamp of approval from, you know, CD baby tells you where your stuff's going. You know, you know where it's going, you know, where your money's coming from, which is very important. They're going to look after your stuff you know, I use them personally. So I definitely agree, you know, record union I'm liking, I'm liking record union. So, you know, if I wanted to dish out some money as a new person, maybe I don't have CD baby money because CD baby is a little expensive, but you know, if I'm just starting out record union looks like a good start. And then I can graduate as I get more money from, from royalties, to CD Baby, where I can hit a bigger market with my music, where I may start off small with Record Union. You know, you know, maybe Record Union might grow in time to have partners like CD Baby, but you can definitely start with rec with a company like Record Union and grow to a CD Baby like company. Or you know, you could go to one of these you know label distributors. I'll leave that up to you, but definitely keep in mind like i said when you're going through this list or if you find another distributor or you know if somebody approaches you check out the main two things that i look for one is pricing two is their partners those are the two main things you want to look for the third thing you would want to look for is analytics most people don't talk about that on their page cd baby does because they've been around for a long time but most of these companies will not talk about analytics and how things work and how you will be able to receive your numbers. But Spotify will have your back as far as for them, you know, as far as your music being placed on Spotify, but that's about it. So I'm going to stop talking because my voice hurts. And uh, yeah, keep in mind those things to look for. Thank you guys for your comments and asking me questions and asking me to do compares in the comments. And I always try to reply as fast as possible. But those are the things I look for when I'm looking through 
distributors or I'm looking at new distributors or old distributors. That's what I'm looking for. Those are the main three things I look for. And depending on what I see tells me if I'm going to do business with them or not. All right. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for hanging out for 30 minutes. If you lasted this long. Yeah. Thank you. And I'll see you in the next one. All right. Peace.